Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in On One Photo Raw 2022. And I want to share a masking tip that, frankly, I just keep forgetting to talk about. I've had people leave me comments when I'm doing masking and saying, why didn't you do this instead of what you did? And uh, it's because I'm kind of slow sometimes. I just keep forgetting to talk about it. So it's a good tip. It can work. It can save you time. I also find that it will depend on the photo as to how much work it requires on your part. Let me talk about that. Here's a photo and it started like that. It currently looks like that with some basic edits in the develop tab. Well, me, the way I like to edit photos, I tend to separate the sky from the foreground because I want to do different things to each one. Now, I'm just going to be talking about how I would mask in this video. This is not an edit, so I just wanted to clarify that. So. What I typically do is I go into effects and let's say, again, not an edit here. I just want to, because this isn't going to look good, but it's going to be obvious how the mask looks. I'm going to click on photo filter and I'm going to say warm, cool. And so I've got this kind of weird looking thing. And what I'll often do is go into masking. I like to invert. I'll go to AI quick mask and then I want to do a keep and a drop. So if I want to drop the city so that I can apply that warm look just to the sky, I will come in and get AI Quick Mask, and it does take a couple of minutes just to get it right, but you know, you tell it what to drop, which means I don't want the mask uh, or the edit applying in the areas that I mark in red. And then for keep, you come in and I do the same thing. I just kind of go over the sky and I tell it quickly and uh, easily, hey, I want to keep the edits that I make here in the sky. So in other words, green is keep, red is drop, and uh, you just kind of give it a little bit of information. Once you do something like that, you click on apply and it will go in, calculate a mask for you. And the mask is basically perfect, right? It could use some tiny minor refinements in a few areas, but honestly, uh, that's, that's about perfect. And I would just click done. And then I've got this warm orange kind of look in the sky. Again, not an edit. I, it's not really how I would do the photo. I'm using that color because it's very obvious and because it's a complicated mask around these edges with all these little crevices and different angles and sh uh, shapes that are different, all that, it's very obvious when I turn this back on. You can see the mask. Honestly, it's perfect. Here's what people keep telling me to do. And it's a great tip and I want to share it with you because on certain photos it can work really well. I'm going to turn this filter off and when you're trying to isolate the sky, go into sky swap ai it's their ai sky replacement tool and it basically automatically creates a mask for you in the sky you click on it it calculates it if you click view there's your mask now it's not perfect it needs some refinement so i would come in here to levels and i would probably do some things like this where i basically i'm just trying to isolate the sky a little bit better than i was able to isolate it automatically with the sky swap ai mask that's automatically generated so it looks pretty good it still needs some refinements so this is where i would hit m i would go into masking i think for me i would just get this perfect brush and then i would just come in here and just you know paint along these edges in order to refine it because otherwise you're going to end up with some gaps in your mask that when you apply uh, significant shifts to the sky, they're not going to show up. So for example, if I hide view, you can see down in here, there's a section that needs to be captured. Let me click view again. So I would come in here and do something like that. And I see the same thing over here. Now I'm doing a kind of a quick and dirty job, but that's an idea of how you can go in and refine the mask. Lots of great masking tools in on one. SkySwap AI is a great way to get started. I'm finding that for accuracy, majority of the time, I'm finding AI Quick Mask to be more accurate than the SkySwap AI mask. And thus, SkySwap AI is requiring me to go in and refine the mask. But you might find photos where the SkySwap AI mask is nearly perfect out of the gate, and then you can just go in and use it. So now I've got that mask. All you do is you copy it and you pop over here to effects. Remember, I've got photo filter here, but that's turned off. That's the AI quick mask. I'm gonna go in here with the sky swap AI mask, use the same photo filter, and I'm gonna do the same warm cool. And now I'm gonna paste the mask and there you go. So there's the sky swap mask applied to the sky and turn that off and turn on AI quick mask. They're virtually indistinguishable simply because I had to refine the SkySwap AI mask to get it more accurate. Whereas I felt like the AI Quick Mask was a bit more accurate out of the gate. So there it is again, that's AI Quick Mask, turn that off, 
turn it back on, that's your SkySwap AI mask. So there's basically, the, as the old expression goes, there's more than one way to skin a cat. But what I wanted to do is point out that you can use the SkySwap AI mask Often I'm finding with a few refinements to really quickly target the sky. And don't forget, you can also take that, and let's say I come over here to Tone Enhancer, you can take that same SkySwap AI mask, you can paste it, and then invert it. Now I'm working, if you look at the view, now I'm working on the foreground. So that's the beauty of these masks. You can recycle them, and I could come over here and say, gosh, it really needs to be brighter. Again, that looks terrible. This is not an edit. I'm doing it because it's super obvious. But you can also see this is the SkySwap AI mask. You can see that there's some refinement that needs to be done along these edges. And I feel like with AI Quick Mask, it was a little bit more accurate. Regardless, you have options. There's different ways to do it. And using the SkySwap AI mask, which is automatically generated for you, might be a quick way to go target a sky, hit it quickly, and move on in your editing. So I wanted to share that tip because a number of people have commented and saying, hey, how come you're not using that mask? You can use it, Jim, and yes, you can. I find that AI Quick Mask tends to be more accurate more often, but again, depending on the sky, SkySwap AI Mask can come in really handy and can target the area pretty accurately pretty often. So you have different ways of doing it, more than one way to skin a cat, all those kind of things. Experiment, have fun, see what works for you. But regardless, you've got great power and control over your masks in on one because honestly, it's just world-class masking. It's fantastic all the way around. Hope this gives you some ideas, my friends. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon with more On One videos. If you like this kind of stuff, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment about other things in On One you would like me to cover. I'm just diving into it. I'm loving it. It's a great product. So much power and control over your photos. And frankly, just a lot of fun. That's it, my friends. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. And until then, adios.